Kiana travels a lot, so I know she wants a good down home low country meal. So I'm making her some gullah gumbo. In our culture, stews are very light, bright, tomatoes, veggies, things like that. So my gumbo is gonna have that, but it's gonna start with that traditional base. What they call in New Orleans a trinity. I guess it's the trinity in our culture too. So gullah cooking is all about one pot dishes. It's about evoking flavor with little to nothing. And the reason for that was to make something that could last. A soup can go a long way. A stew can go a long way. I'm gonna head over to my stove here and make the roux. And a roux is just basically flour and some type of fat. It, it thickens it up, it gives it flavor, it gives it color. I got about a cup of canola oil. You need an oil with a high smoke point because it burns quickly. And the thing about a roux is you gotta stand by that pot. One cup of flour. Break down the oil in the flour. I have my Dutch oven on about a medium high heat. And what I'm doing right now is actually burning the flour and the oil. I know that sounds crazy, but that's, that's the start of a roux. You gotta brown it. But for a gullah gumbo, it's gonna be on the lighter side because I'm not cooking the roux as long, but it's still gonna have lots of flavor. <laughs> and I'm starting to see that peanut butter color that I'm looking for. And it's just basically that flour is just, you know, browning in with the oil. So keep scraping. And if you start to see that it's burning a little too quickly, turn your heat down just a little bit. And we're almost there. All right, I'm gonna add my veggies in now and cook my veggies down with the roux. Look at that. Ooh, what I'd like to do right now is start adding in my spices. A few pinches of salt, black pepper. And because it wouldn't be me if I didn't add my house seasoning, some smoked paprika, onion powder, garlic powder. All right, so I'm adding a pinch of mace. Mace is almost like nutmeg. It smells like nutmeg, it's very bright. And if you can't find mace, you can always use nutmeg. A pinch of gumbo filet. Gumbo filet is um, ground sassafras plant, all right? I'm gonna add two bay leaves in there. Now I'm gonna grab my garlic and tomatoes. And I like to add in my garlic and tomatoes at this point because I don't wanna cook out that garlic flavor. I want it to be really pronounced in the gumbo. And tomatoes cook down fairly quickly, so I like to add it in at this point as well. Now for the liquid. I'm gonna add in about three cups of seafood stock. So just about this whole box, leave a cup. I'm also adding about three cups of chicken stock. And the reason I'm mixing the stocks is because I'm adding smoked turkey and I'm also adding seafood. Gotta add the shrimp. It wouldn't be gullah if I didn't. All right. I'm gonna bring this to a rolling boil. I'm gonna also add smoked turkey wing. Mm-hmm. My grandmama and them always added some type of smoked meat to help enhance the flavor of whatever stew they're making. Okay, so I'm gonna let this go uncover, just let it simmer. After an hour, I'm gonna add the llama beans. So I'm gonna let the llama beans cook up in this. And then last but not least, you know I'm gonna throw in some shrimp. Of course, I'm gonna add traditional gullah crab rice to the top of that gumbo. I'm gonna heat up two cups of chicken stock because it infuses flavor into the rice. This is about half of this box. For every one cup of rice, you use two cups of liquid. And it's important to rinse your rice. Let me tell you why. You gotta get that starch off the rice. Once my water runs clear, you know you got most of the starch off. My stock has come to a boil. I'm gonna add my rice. Bring it down to a simmer and cover it. All right, while that goes for about 15 minutes, I'm gonna cut up my Trinity. Got a tomato I'm gonna use a little later. And of course, garlic. Crab rice tastes just like it sounds. It's crab meat and rice. Now we like to use blue crab claw meat because it evokes more of that crabby flavor. If you wanna be traditional, you gotta use claw meat. And if you wanna go old school, you'll sit there and crack some blue crabs and add that meat into the rice. That's how my, that's how my great grandparents used to do it. Okay, got about half of this bell pepper that I'm dicing up finally. All right, add it to this bowl. And I got one clove of garlic, of course. Y'all know I like my garlic. 
You know what, to make life easier, I'm just gonna add the garlic to the veggies right there. Right now, there's so much flavor going on here, everything is just gonna melt together, it's gonna be awesome. Let's get this veggie sauteed. What I like to do is start my crab rice with a little butter and oil. I like to use the combination of two types of fat. Butter has a little bit more water content, so to really get a, a nice fry on my veggies, I like to add oil. And while that's getting hot, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see if the rice is done. My rice is nice and fluffy. Let me tell you another secret to getting the perfect fluffy rice. After it's done, you turn the heat off, put your top back on, and let it steam off the heat. Your rice will be nice and fluffy and not overcooked. Let me add the onions, the garlic, and the celery. A little salt to draw out some of that water. Woo hoo hoo. Smells so good. All right, so I'm just cooking it until it gets a little softened and the onions turn translucent. I'm gonna take my rice, add the rice to the pot. My grandmother and my mom, they call everything in the house a pot. Even though it's a pan, it's a pot. Get all the crusty stuff. We're almost like uh, making fried rice. Turn my heat down just a little bit. I'm gonna grab my crab meat. This is a pound of crab claw meat. To really get that crab flavor, you gotta use the claw meat. I wanna grab some of my house seasoning. Two heavy pinches of that. And last but not least, tomatoes. A pop of freshness. It's gonna also give it a pop of color. Crab meat, rice, bell pepper. I tell you, this is a meal in itself. Mm-hmm, mm-mm. Mmm. Mmm. Let me close this up right now, because I tell you, I'm about to sit down and eat a bowl of that by itself. So this has been going on for about an hour. Let me add my llama beans. Ooh, what is gullah gumbo without llama beans? Every stew, every soup my grandmother makes, she adds llama beans. And that's why I add llama beans to my gumbo. This turkey is starting to loosen up a little bit. I'm gonna pull that turkey apart, and it's gonna be a part of the meat, too. Mm-hmm. The color is beautiful. Those llama beans look great. I got a pound of shrimp that I've cleaned, deveined it, deshelled. And had I put the shrimp in earlier in the process, it just would have been overcooked. And who wants tough shrimp? No, 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 no. Now I'm gonna take my turkey wing out and shred it and put it back into my gullah gumbo. Mm -hmm. Not only do you get a bite of shrimp, you're also gonna get a little bite of smoked turkey. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put the bone back in there with the shredded meat. 